Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation. Recorded live April 14th, 2011. In this session, Alan Harper from PlayUp discusses his efforts in adapting their automated software build process to iOS applications. Hey, um, when we decided, hey, we're going to start releasing some iPhone apps, everyone else was thinking about what we need to do and all those bits and pieces. I sat down and thought, okay, how do we actually make sure that we're going to deliver good software considering, as a company, we don't have experience with this at all. There's me and that's it. So, we've been around for a while now. We've got existing uh, experience with uh, mobile apps and web-based mobile apps. We had some would say an experiment with PhoneGap, I think it went pretty well. I think we stretched it as far as you could and probably a little bit further because we had to get it working on Android as well and that was fun with uh, Android's version of WebKit that doesn't support things like animations properly. Uh, everyone around here is used to doing Agile. Uh, TDD is how I've got our very, very large scale Rails app doing things. So we thought, well, we're used to doing this, and everyone's used to using CI. We, we like to have a nice little green light that goes red every now and then, but we make it go green again. So we thought, well, what are we going to do next? So I thought about it, yeah, this is where we're at. No experience, there's me, and that's just about it. We haven't actually written any code yet. We've had some spiking, a few experimentations, but there's, I think we started working on some stuff today, but we officially start to next week. Um, but our largest concern was we're going to have a fairly long lifespan with the apps we're thinking. Oh, it's probably easily going to turn into sort of multi-year sort of projects, so we're going to start this off and try and keep it right from the start. And while this is the first team working on this product, we've got one product which has been uh, done by an external contract and a few other bits and pieces which I've heard in the pipeline that we need to apply the same process to the, these apps and get them out the door in future. So let's try and get this first app right, get the processes in place, and then scale it out once we've got the hang of it. So uh, the first thing, of course, we like a continuous integration. We love that green light. Even if that light was red when I went to take the photo this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I will point out that this, this CI machine is separate from our main one. This is just for our iOS stuff so far. But this app that we've started working on and haven't got any code written on, it's already in CI right now. So let me see my notes. Yeah. The main parts, we want to unit testing, functional testing, static analysis because in Objective C with Clang, it's easy, so let's get some free stuff. I like free stuff. And top all off with Jenkins so I don't have to do anything. It just happens automatically. We see a red light and think, uh, whose fault was it this time? <laughs> and just for a bit of humour, we've actually got, because uh, it's an OS 10 box, we've got uh, using the say command to blame one of the other teams that they broke the build. <laughs> It used to say whose commit it was, but we thought, no, nah, that sounds fairer. Um, I looked at a few options, the send test and XRO4, JH unit and CEDA. Send test was all cool because, hey, it's an XRO4, you can push the build and test or whatever the button is, except for the fact that um, who's ever got it to work in CI? I would love somebody to prove me wrong here. <laughs> I couldn't find anything. I thought, well, if it doesn't work in CI, I'm not interested, I don't care about it. So, sort of went on from that. Uh, GH unit, there's actually some documentation. People I've spoken to around the place have got more experience than me, so I said, hey, this seems to work. Um, I hear some other shops in Melbourne use it, so I thought, hey, let's work for that. And to get it working in CI, it's just, oh, drop this file into your build and add a step, and it's easy, and it actually was, so I'm happy enough with that. Um, the Cedar as well, which some people said, hey, that's awesome. I'd love to figure out how you're supposed to get it installed. I can't get it working well, with Xcode. Work in Xcode 4? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the requirements was because everybody in the team except for me hasn't used Xcode. I thought it's a huge jump from 3 to 4. Let's just start off on 4. We'll deal with the hassles, which they will be, and we'll get away from there. Um, of course, that brings us to the next thing, which is functional testing. I mean, there's UI automation, IQ, Frank. Um, not too many. Uh, UI automation is something that Apple actually provides, which is awesome. It runs in instruments, but um, the documentation is well somewhere around crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. last much. You can't fire it off from CI. Exactly. 
that's, that's another one of the points. No CI, not happening. We've had a problem with the previous project where it wasn't working properly in CI and when we checked on it about two weeks later, the, everything failed pretty much. So we fixed that, but yeah, if it's not in CI, I'm not interested. Um, IQ, it looked cool a year ago, 18 months ago, but um, yeah, as you can see, the last commit was you know, nine months or so ago now, so scratch that. And then of course, uh, someone happened to talk about Frank a couple months ago, which reminded me, that, hey, that looks awesome. <laughs> and they uh, talked about it here last week at work, so uh, <laughs> thanks, Stuart. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy enough. Um, it's CI, it's a dream to get working. It's, you know, two commands, I think, in a rake file I've got it running for us. And it uses Cucumber, which for us is hugely important, given we've already got a uh, rail shop and we've got Cucumber doing other stuff. All our QA people are like, oh, Cucumber, I know this. And the QA person in our team has used Frank before as well, so it's, why use something else when this is obviously a good fit for our people? Uh, and then, of course, stake analysis, which is like the, the last component in our uh, quality production pipeline. Um, it's always been a bit hard to find out exactly what Clang build scan does. The docs sort of say, yeah, it's awesome, but it doesn't actually say what it does. I've seen the reference, you know, memory leaks, null referencing, and probably some other things, but it's just to try and stop for people that don't use build and analyze to check on stuff. Nearly everybody in the team's new, so we're going to have some fun memory management issues at times I'm absolutely certain of, because I'm sure I made the mistakes along the way. So we want to try and get them early and try and fix them quickly. Um, it's a yellow at the moment, that's something I'm working on right now. So it's, it's a report in Jenkins with the scan build plugin, which is actually a Jenkins plugin. Um, but yeah, I actually want to bump it up so it starts going red and then for the many external libraries which have got build warnings next code for at the moment, I'll figure something out shortly, I hope. <laughs> it is possible for claims to give false positives though, so I don't know whether or not it would be advisable to make it an error. <laughs> it's something worth investigating, I think, at this stage and then we'll see how we go. I, I'm happy to come back in a couple of months when we've actually done this for a couple of months and say, hey, this worked or it didn't or whatnot. But um, that's definitely a concern of mine with how many of those sorts of things you see with the claims false warnings and then external libraries which just spew warnings like they're going out of fashion. Yeah, LLVM2 is a lot better at reducing false Alright, cool, I'll have to have a look at that also, one too. Also, Xcode 4 um, will keep history of uh, um, analyze errors and not get rid of them. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping Xcode 4.1 is a bit more yeah. awesome. <laughs> Sorry? Sorry? Sorry. <laughs> um, I was going to mention test flight, but obviously that's been covered pretty well tonight. We do use it already. I've got our CI system. If all the tests pass, everything passes, it goes up to CI automatically. It's already saved my butt a couple of times in some, so with some people in the UK that were having trouble getting stuff installed and there was back and forth and I was, was driving up the wall, I installed this and the next day it was gone. Problem solved. Um, there was Voxel, which I mentioned before earlier today. I had a look at it today. It looks like it's about 80% of the way there. I need to do a few patches to make it fit our environment. But um, it's just a simple Ruby gem which goes and does the IPAs, does the other builds you want, uploads to test flight, and looks all nice and Ruby, which again works for us because all, all our build at the moment uses uh, a small rake file. So we'll look at that some more. Um, now, I've still got a few concerns. We're going to do push notifications in our next app. I'm not sure how we're really going to test that yet. We're going to be using Urban Airship, so we can sort of test that things went off okay, but I have a feeling it's just going to be uh, manual testing with a bit of good luck, <laughs> with my experience with it. Uh, a larger concern is our internal API. We've decided to have uh, probably a Ruby app which sits in front of various internal services, and it will just be the single endpoint, so we can make sure that the client, uh, sorry, the client's only getting the server from the data that it needs. And that's okay. I just want to say, you can set up your app so that it launches when you receive a push notification next week. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're seeing beside the poor person who has to deal with some of this stuff, so. <laughs> and learn Objective-C. Um, and of course, the classic one is making sure once our API is in production and our clients are in production, that old clients don't get broken. There's some features we want to roll out to newer clients, but a lot of the stuff should still work with version 1 when it finally gets released. So, I'm not quite sure how we're going to tackle some of this stuff yet, but we'll definitely have a think about it. Or you come join us and help us fix it. 
<laughs> uh, useful pile of links. Um, I'll post this on Twitter and other various places later on. Um, I'm Aussie Geek on Twitter, so if you want to grab me there, that's fine. Um, but that's really about it. That's the f a screenshot of the app we just started to work on called Play Up Live. So if you're into sports at all, it's going to be awesome once we get there. Um, first, not sure which sport's going to be first yet. We. It's baseball today? Okay. <laughs> Basically, it'll be some sport that's about to start somewhere in the world instead of starting for a season, which isn't going to start for another six months. But, um, yeah, you got any questions about various bits and pieces? I'm sure there's got to be something. How do you uh, build a computer with uh, very uh, different uh, targeting uh, Do you actually build just one version of the app, which is the integration label you build? Uh, at the moment in CI, we've got one build which uh, runs the GH unit stuff, another build for Frank, and one more which is done in a release configuration for an ad hoc build that goes to test flight. So there's three at the moment, it wouldn't surprise me if I need to add a fourth, so there's, once we get ready to go on the App Store, there's just a file we go, yep, it's ready to roll. Command line calls? It all happens with Jenkins, it runs a rake file I've got set up. Rake? Yep. I'll post that online too, but you can do it with a rake file, you can do it with any sort of script, it's just that we're comfortable with Ruby in-house, so it was just the default tool basically. I assume under the hood it's using it's code build. Yeah. yeah. It's really straightforward. Yeah. It, it, build this target with this, with this configuration, put it here. It's straightforward except for, the except for the command that generates the IPAs. That's a bit of black magic voodoo stuff. Yeah, how do you do that? Part of the tip is when you're specifying the output path for the IPA, specify a full path. Otherwise it goes somewhere I've yet to discover. <laughs> and cross your fingers. Yeah, we found the same thing. You found where it went or? No, we didn't find where it went. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just give it a full path. Just <laughs> How do you handle, uh, one of the things I've found is that, for example, you can build on Xcode 4, against the Xcode 4.3 SDK mm -hmm. and you put it actually on a real device that's Xcode 4.2 and things will behave differently. And vice versa, you can build it for 4.2 and then you put it on, on a 4.3 device. Subtle little changes will happen. I agree. How, is there any... We've actually... In the past, we actually talked about taping um, iPod touches to the back of an iMac to actually get it to run. <laughs> so we have an automated machine that would actually run it on different... Uh, Trust me, that idea has crossed my mind. I haven't yet ruled it out. I'm, <laughs> I'm not certain yet. I'd prefer something we do in software, but if to get it working on the versions we're targeting, it involves doing that, well... I guess we'll have to do that and try I and get mean, the other all thing, these old I mean, devices. The simulator and the real devices, I mean, anyone who's got a bit of experience will have come across things that are different between the two. So Absolutely. You know. um, I think I've seen something with Frank. I was talking to Sean or something recently about getting Frank to automatically fire up the app on a real device, which I'm interested in. GHU, I'm not sure how to go about that yet, but yeah. I wouldn't rule out using a real device for yeah. how so cheap you, it is for the benefits you get. On a real device. Yeah. Auto yeah. Automatically yeah. out of Jenkins. CI, though, yeah. Does anyone know a way of building and booting an app on the device? I wonder if, if it's got something to do with... You can Apple script Xcode to do it. But that's wrong. Given that Xcode 3 used GDB, I'm, I wonder if there's some magic bit of GDB and something else you get up and running and it starts, but... I Ira Monkey. The other big problem with the whole um, using, using Cucumber and, and Frank, which is, um, is the whole assertion issue. So actually asserting that what is on the screen is actually on the screen. Yeah, of course. Um, that is, that's the big problem we have. So we have a massive cucumber suite, but it's all manual. So we run it manually. It's painful, yeah. uh, but, it, but it actually works. Yeah, of course. And there's going to be some element of manual when, testing about what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could get away from this. So it's, it's, it's one of the issues that we, we'd love to solve. <laughs> I think we'll wrap it up there, guys. Thanks again to Alan Harper for sharing his experiences in automating the iOS build process. Thanks also to PlayUp for hosting this month's event. If you would like to know more about PlayUp, visit them on the web at iplayup.com. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.